Hello everyone, this is Brad McMahon with Trader Trading Headquarters. You are watching our free educational video series for traders and investors. All we ask in return is that if you like the video, like it, and if you really like it, share it with a friend. Now the falling wedge is a bullish pattern that begins wide at the top and contracts as prices move lower. This price action forms a cone that slopes down as the reaction highs and the reaction lows converge. Now what makes this different than a symmetrical triangle? The symmetrical triangle has no definitive slope and no bias. But the falling wedges definitely slope down and have a bullish bias. However, this bullish bias cannot be realized until a resistance breakout. Now the falling wedge can also fit into the continuation category. As a continuation pattern, the falling wedge will still slope down, but the slope will be against the prevailing uptrend. As a reversal pattern, the falling wedge slopes down with the prevailing trend. Now regardless of the type, whether it's a reversal or a continuation, the falling wedges are regarded as a bullish pattern. Now to qualify as a reversal pattern, there must be a prior trend to reverse. And ideally you want the falling wedge to form after an extended downtrend and mark the final low. But the pattern usually forms over about a three to six month period and the prior downtrend should be at least three months old. So now that we've identified our prior uptrend, we're gonna look for upper resistance. And it takes at least two reaction highs to form the upper resistance line. And ideally you'd want three. Each reaction high should be lower than the previous high. So if you take a look here at RDC, we have our resistance line here, and we have reaction points here, here, and here. And then we're gonna look for lower support lines. And we need at least two reaction lows to form the lower support line. And each reaction low should be lower than the previous low. If you take a look at RDC, we have two reaction points here and here. Now once we've identified our support and resistance, we're gonna look for contraction. The upper resistance line and the lower support line start to converge to form a cone as the pattern matures. The reaction lows still penetrate the previous lows but this penetration becomes shallower. The shallower lows indicate a decrease in selling pressure and create a lower support line with less negative slope than the upper resistance line. Now to trade this pattern, we wanna look for a breakthrough on resistance. And this is a bullish confirmation of the pattern when we break through the resistance line in a convincing fashion. Now it might be better to wait for a break above the previous reaction line here for further confirmation. And this confirmation has a higher probability once resistance is broken. There can sometimes be a reaction to test the new support level. Another thing we want to look for is the volume. Now the volume is not really that important in a rising wedge, but it's a key ingredient to really confirm the breakout. And without an expansion in volume, the breakout might lack some conviction and the chances of it being a false breakout are much higher. Okay, here's another falling wedge on FCX. And just like a rising wedge, the falling wedge can be one of the most difficult chart patterns to accurately recognize. Now the falling wedge is designed to spot a decrease in the downside momentum, and it actually alerts technicians to a potential trend reversal. So even though selling pressure may be diminishing, Demand does not win out until resistance is broken. And as with most patterns, it's important to wait for a breakout and combine some other analysis to confirm your signal. So let's recap the falling wedge on FCX. We have upper resistance and we have reaction points here, 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 and here. And then we have support levels with one, two, three, four reaction points for support. We actually break through here around the $5 range and as you can see we actually pull back and that resistance now becomes support. If we look below we can see that volume confirmed the breakout and the stock continued to rise over the next few weeks. 
and that's how to trade the falling wedge. Thanks for watching the video. If you like this video and would like to learn more about stock charts and patterns, visit our website at TraderTrainingHQ.com. Here you will find lots of information on trading the markets. Go to our training tab and you'll find free courses, articles, trading view charts, watch lists, trade examples, books, and even a chat room. If you'd like to get a fill for our membership benefits, fill out this information here and create a password and you'll get access to more free lessons. The free lessons include simpler stock trading for beginners, candlestick patterns, chart patterns, free introduction videos, webinars, and a trading community where you can access all of our social media links. Please take a moment to read our disclaimer. The information provided herein is our opinions only. Under no circumstances do any statements here represent a recommendation to buy or sell securities or make any kind of investment. You are responsible for your own due diligence. To summarize, we do not provide investment advice nor do we make any claims or promises that any information here will lead to a profit, loss, or any other result. These videos are for educational purposes only.